Are you the best guard in this tournament right now, in your estimation? Yeah. <laughs> Unhesitating. Yeah. I said the best guard. Yeah. Who's number two? <laughs> Whoever y'all picked to be number two. I can't pick. I ain't see a lot of, I mean, you know. Dion Waiters Jr., born December 10th, 1991. The 2012 NBA draft was not as good as expected in hindsight and certainly fell off in the first round beginning with the 10th pick, with some promising players turning up in the second round in Draymond Green and Chris Middleton. Both those guys became NBA All-Stars and champions, and at least Draymond has a shot at becoming a Hall of Famer when his career is all said and done. The other Claire Hall of Famers in that draft, of course, Anthony Davis, the number one pick, potentially Bradley Beal, third overall, and Damian Lillard, no question. The latter and Draymond were both taken behind today's feature Dion Waiters, Lillard being taken two picks after at six. In hindsight, of course, Damian, if the draft happened today, would be taken no less than second overall, and depending on the team and their needs, he easily could have went number one. He had that good of a career, surprisingly making the NBA's 75th anniversary team, celebrating the top 75 players in NBA history over Kyrie Irving. Interestingly, because in hindsight once again, the Cavs would no question have just taken Lillard and traded Kyrie right away for the chance Dame would eventually be paired with LeBron James, most likely resulting in multiple championships. In actuality, what happened was Dion Waiters was taken, didn't have much chemistry with Irving like expected, and didn't last very long with the Cavaliers, traded after two and a half seasons. By 25, Dion Waiters was already a journeyman on his third NBA team by then, a Miami Heat team he was suspended three times in one season's by for reasons like griping about playing time and role only to not play the next game and show up eating popcorn on the team bench during the game or calling in to work sick then posting a picture on Instagram on a boat celebrating his birthday then the most infamous eating a THC infused gummy before getting on the plane with the team to LA, having a panic attack midair, and having to have emergency medical attention upon the plane's landing. Dion Waiters was supposed to be a star. After all, before he entered the league, all anyone could talk about was his potential. He was a big guard in the mold of a franchise too and had opportunities one after the other to have whatever career he wanted. A star at shooting guard helping rebuild a franchise, the Cavs early on. One of the best six men in history, Cavs post LeBron return and OKC. Chance to be on a great team again as a starter with the Heat, an important contributor in their contending run, all squandered away by just 28 years old, out the league since playing seven games for the bubble championship winning Lakers. What happens when potential is under polish? Let's talk about it. Salute to Mr. Corner Store for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Dion Waiters was a 6'4 guard from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania that was a late bloomer beginning his high school career having not played a game as a freshman but committing to Syracuse the summer before his sophomore year. All, once again, off the potential the Orange saw in him, like most would at all points of his career. By the end of his senior year, Waiters had climbed up the recruiting board to 15th overall and the second best shooting guard according to ESPN. He said of his time being recruited by Syracuse was he was basically lied to by Coach Beheim, who promised he'd be a starter and focal point from day one, playing alongside his cousin Scoop Jardine. Instead, he got there and was given the ultimatum, play our way or there's the door. He didn't start a game at Syracuse, but what he did was show that mesmerizing potential everyone always said he had, putting himself in position to leave school early. He averaged 12.6 points a game, 2 rebounds, 2 assists, and shot 36% from 3 and still got an early guarantee from the Cavs that if he left, they were taking him with their lottery pick. 
Stunt number one, immaturity. When speaking about what led to Dion Waiters not exactly panning out as expected when chosen before two Hall of Famers is his level of maturity over the years. You can say this is why he should have stayed in school longer and not jumped to the NBA when he wasn't ready, but I disagree. One thing I do understand and can relate to with Waiters is what he said about coaches telling you and your family one thing when they're recruiting you, opposed to the complete different person they are when they have you signed and on campus. Beheim told him he would basically be the face of the team and have the green light from the start, but ultimately decided to play sophomore Brandon Treesh in front of him both his freshman and sophomore years. In a mature decision, Waiters decided to return for a sophomore season with the team when he could have easily just transferred. He played well enough for coach Byron Scott, then Cavalier head coach, to fall in love with his game. Scott said after Anthony Davis, he would take Dion Waiters over any other player, and that's what the team did with their fourth overall pick. They wanted a guard to pair with Kyrie just like Golden State did with Clay and Washington with Beal right before Waiters. But Waiters proved that wrong almost immediately. His style clashed with Kyrie from day one, seeing as they both wanted to dominate the ball and Waiters' body language didn't help every time Kyrie took a bad shot. When LeBron returned to Cleveland in Waiters' third season, he complained when LeBron didn't pass him the ball as well. Locker room fights with Tristan Thompson who criticized his defense and decision making to having a press conference with Kyrie to ensure the two actually liked each other when it was clear they didn't, not at least on the court. Immaturity followed him to his third team Miami who gave him a four-year $54 million deal leading to him being insubordinate about his role on the team therefore being suspended three times for reasons in his control and as mentioned earlier, popcorn, boats, and weed. You hear him speak now and he'll admit he just didn't get it at the time and selfishly only thought about him and his stats or outcome. It led to him being traded from Miami to Memphis, then waived and signed with the front-running Lakers with whom he played seven games and won a ring. A more mature Waiters who understood opportunity in time and dedicated himself to the game more instead of in contract years or after controversy may have became the player his potential said he'd be. Stunt number two, LeBron returning to Cleveland. Dion Waiters wasn't the best locker room guy apparently, but he was productive when he did show his potential early on. He increased his scoring and shooting from his first to second year, leaving the team excited to have a player like LeBron added to the mix, winning a championship the year after Dion Waiters was gone. Waiters with LeBron needed to be a spot-up shooter, but he couldn't commit to that role, making it known in the media that's not the style he wants to play. He'd rather go ISO demon and throw up a tough shot which he made quite often. Kyrie can play with a LeBron because Kyrie is really a shooting guard and was mature enough to see his opportunity even with LeBron next to him. But LeBron's return made Waiters a problem and not an asset. He still took ill-advised shots and extra dribbles into his mid-range shot, disrupting the team's flow and making it difficult for he, LeBron and Kyrie to dominate the ball like they needed to. He was traded to OKC soon after. Maybe Cleveland would have been more patient with him had they not land LeBron. Instead, they did and it meant the end in Cleveland for Dion Waiters. Stunt number three, injury and fitness. Dion Waiters has always had that body type. You can tell if he lets go, he'd be Raymond Felton. In Waiters' first four seasons, he was an Iron Man, rarely missing games. But after just four days into the 16-17 season, he was ruled out for two weeks, tearing a muscle in his hip. He then came back stronger and was even named the player of the week once during the season. But he'd missed the final 13 games of the 16-17 season with an ankle injury, a pre-existing navicular bone fracture and didn't decide to get surgery to fix it until January 2018, causing him to have to miss more games, playing 30 that year. 
Every year since the 15-16 season, Waiters has either fallen out of shape or wasn't healthy enough to play. The Heat traded him after three games to the Lakers in 2019, and after just seven plus his five playoff games, he retired from the league altogether at 28. All in all, Dion Waiters wasn't a bust, just disappointing all around. You wish with his game he had a better attitude and able to adjust to unfavorable situations, also better IQ on the court to know he couldn't be stopped one-on-one, -on -one, so attacking the basket much more than he settled for threes or mid-range pull-ups. You also wish he stayed healthy enough to play out the second part of his career, one filled with talks of meeting his potential, but not the results. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, Dion Waiters' growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.